Amen. Amen. Well, amen. Well, thank you, musicians. We're going to get on into the Word tonight. Amen. We'll continue. Amen. This is what we started in this morning. Amen. John chapter number 4, verse number 23 and verse number 24. So we'll go to this more, uh, this evening. John 4, 23 through verse number 24. Amen. John 24 uh, and 23 through verse number 24 here. He said, The hour cometh, and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. But God is a spirit. They that worship Him, they that worship Him, must worship in spirit and in truth. If you would, Lord, be with us tonight, Lord. Help me, God, to speak what You have given me to speak. Help me to preach Your Word, God. Give me the words to say, God. That I may declare your word. That you may with clarity, God. That I may declare your word with authority, Lord. Lord, I ask you to speak, to convict, to challenge, to help tonight, Lord. Lord, we know that you are worthy of all praise, all glory, all honor, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all you've done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to continue talking about true uh, praise and worship, or true worship, amen. And I'm going to t- uh, amen. start off tonight by talking about true and false worship. Amen. I do believe it's an important part of Christianity. Amen. And truly, the whole reason that we are here, amen, and the whole reason we do everything that we do is for the glory of Amen and worship of Almighty God. Amen. The guy we worship, everything we do is to be in worship unto Him. Amen. We are, our lives should be worship unto Him. How we live our lives, it should worship Him. Amen. When men see us, they see Christ and see Him lifted up in our lives. Amen. I want my life to be in in worship unto Him. I want to do what I do because I want Him to receive glory and worship for me. Amen. But we must beware. For there is true and there is false worship. Amen. We do know that there is strange fire. We must beware of strange fire. The Bible talks about in Leviticus chapter number 10, verse number 1 and 2, it talks about Nahab and Abihu, amen, the sons of Aaron, amen, and offer strange fire. He says, and Nahab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer and put uh, put fire therein and uh, put incense therein uh, thereon and offered strange fire before the Lord which He commanded them not. And, and there went out a uh, out, uh, fire from heaven and devoured them and they died before the Lord. Amen. We see this strange fire and we do know that there is strange fire in what calls itself worship in a time that we live in just as well as it was in this time of Nahab and Abihu as they put, uh, uh, took their censer and put fire and incense and the Lord did not tell them to put in and they offered strange fire unto the Lord. We must beware of offering this strange fire. And we do see this Amen. In the time that we live in. Amen. Much like the time of Nebuchadnezzar as he built a statue to make a new way of worship. Amen. He made a statue. Amen. Played probably some of the other. He had all these different types of music. Probably the best of the best of that time. Amen. Probably sounded very good. But it was not biblical worship. He commanded that everyone would bow to this golden statue. 
statue, in this golden image that Nebuchadnezzar made here. If they didn't bow, they would be cast into a furnace, a fiery furnace. Amen. We do know there was it. There was three that did not bow, but he tried to make a new way of worship. We must beware, amen, of a new way of worship. There's no new way to worship, amen. A new way is a false way. The Bible, to, the Bible has us a prescribed method to do everything. And if we want to do everything decently in order, we must follow the Scriptures. Amen. And we do see a mess. Amen. By a new, a new way to worship. David made new carts to try to, uh, amen, to bring the ark, uh, a new cart to try to bring in the ark of God. Amen. Another way. Amen. And many have made, uh, try to make a new way to make new carts to usher in the presence of God. This will never do. Amen. You can't usher in the presence of God in any other way than is found in this Word. Amen. No other no way. The way, amen, we must beware. Amen. Let's not try to bring the presence of God any other way than the way that God has said in His Word. Amen. Let us do all things decently and in order. Amen. And, the, amen. and finally, the golden calf. Amen. True. Amen. They said, we don't lay you ask Aaron. It's no Moses went away. Amen. God gave him the Ten Commandments there. Amen. He, they said, we don't like what's become of this man, no, of Moses. Amen. Amen. We really want to do away with this old. Amen. It come with new. As we've already mentioned a little bit about the new. We must beware of an attitude. Out with the old. In with the new. We, amen. We have found a better way. Beware of such. Worship is. Amen. Uh, we must worship in a biblical way. These are all going on today. Amen. I've warned. Amen. And many. Amen. It calls itself Christian concerts of these three things. And I do see these three things coming about. If they have these big concerts. Amen. With these. Amen. Contemporary. Uh, so called Christian music. And there's nothing Christian about most of them. Amen. I'm not saying there's no Christians that went into that concert, but I do believe, amen, you better, they better beware, especially if they was told the truth. Amen, beware of such. Amen, amen, they bring in a Nebuchadnezzar statue there. Amen, and made a new way to worship. There needs to be, amen, someone, it's Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that will refuse to bow to this strange fire. We must beware of a new way of worship. He may beware of this false way of worship. People try to usher in the presence of God. He may in many ways. He may, I do believe. He may, as I said, I do believe emotions will, us will sometimes come when you're praising or worshiping God. I do believe. He may in emotions. But I don't believe this is alone what ushers in the presence of God. Where we're never going to see God's presence unless we're willing to pray. Amen. And we fall on our face and live a holy life. Amen. We're not going to do it outside of a pure heart of worship. That's what ushers in the presence of God. We must not try to make a new way. One time, a long time ago, I remember seeing on the internet somebody put in, this is true revival. Amen. And it was a lot of people shouting, running, but amen, I, I did not see that being true revival. Amen. Why? Amen. Because amen much. Amen. It was one thing, it was a church that's preaching false doctrine. It was a oneness Pentecostal church and they kept preaching false doctrine. Amen. He, when the, if it's revival, they're going to put away that wicked false doctrine that they're in. Amen. And I see many people call things revival, but they walk out the same way that they came. 
Amen. They go out and do the same old things that they've always done. Amen. Revival is not that. We don't need a new way to usher in the presence of God. What it happened, what it took for them in the book of Acts is what it's going to take for us today. Amen. We must beware of strange fire. And that golden calf, amen, we must beware of getting to that place of out with the old, in with the new. Give us a new way. These are all going on today. We see this, amen, abounding everywhere. Amen. Where people, amen, will go to these, amen, strange fire concerts that calls itself Christian that is not, that is far from Christian. Amen. Amen. True worship only comes out of purity, a pure heart. Amen. A pure and holy heart, as we said something about this morning. But we cannot worship outside of pure and holy, of purity and holiness. Worship, amen, comes. The Bible tell warns us in the book of James that bitter water and sweet water don't come out of the same fountain. You can't offer a holy God worship or offer holy worship worship, amen, to a holy God unless you're living holy just the same. Amen. We need, amen, we must be pure. This is true worship. God wants worship out of purity. Amen. He wants a heart of worship as we'll talk about later. But He does. He wants that heart to be pure. Amen. False worship makes a show out of worship. Amen. Really, man, they make a show and have even made worship an entertainment. We must Beware. False worship wants a, wants a show, but true worship wants Christ to be seen, Christ to be lifted up. Amen. And don't really care about who sees them. Amen. We must beware of false worship. Amen. Not to put, put on a show. Amen. False worship. Amen. Is fueled by pride or greed. Amen. And or greed. Amen. I do believe. These two things fuel, amen, a false worship. Why does people falsely worship? Why is people doing this wrong? Amen, for the wrong reasons. It's because they want to be seen and they want, they, they want greediness. Now, amen, I'm not telling you, amen, it's necessary, amen, it's not anything wrong with getting excited and running around the church. I do believe sometimes we get excited and do that. As I, amen, I've heard many preachers say, put enough pressure on the water hose, it's going to move. Amen, you get excited about the things of God. But I'm going to tell you, amen, we must not, we must beware of doing it for the wrong reason. And if you're doing it for the wrong reasons, Repent of it and worship God out of a whole heart. Amen. Amen. Just start doing it for the right reasons. Repent. Get on your face before God until you worship with your whole heart for the right reasons. Amen. We must beware. Amen. True worship is not looking for just a goosebump. Amen. I do. I have had goosebumps in church. I, amen. I have felt uh, my, amen, I have felt hey, hey, it feels good to be in the presence of God. But it's not, this is not the entirety of true worship. Amen. As I said, it, it, amen, these emotions will come. Amen. Feeling, good feelings will come when you're in the presence of God. Amen. There's no place I'd rather be than in God's presence. Amen. Whether it's working for Him or in the presence of God in a prayer meeting, amen, in a church service, amen, it's a wonderful place to be. But it's this amen. But this is where we should not be seeking after a goosebump. We should be seeking after God's presence that's going to change us, that's going to make us like Him, conform us into His image. Much of false worship, amen, will have an appearance of spirituality to it. Amen. It's, uh, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse number 5, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. We must beware of false worship that has a form of this, but they deny the power thereof. Amen. They may, things may feel good to the flesh there, but there's something not right. Amen. Biblically about that. Beware. 
Amen. These two things of false worship, amen, and true worship will never mix. You cannot mix true worship and false worship. Amen. As it says in Revelation 3.16, I would that you be cold or hot, for if you are lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. Amen. Truly, true worship and false worship, you can't do both. Amen. You must have it one way or another. I've had people ask me to come, amen, and talk to these people, come to these concerts. Amen. Come see it for yourself. I, amen. I'm going to tell you, I, amen, I want to worship true, uh, in a true way. I, amen. It would, do, it would be detrimental to me to walk in that because I'm not, I, I have no mixture with that garbage. Amen. I'm not going to have any mixture with a man, amen, that drinks, amen, drinks them out of, amen, ten different types of alcohol or however many it was that David Crowder did. Amen. People that use profanity, people that admittedly use drugs. I have no fellowship with that. I can't mix and worship with them. Now, somebody might walk in this church and pretend to worship, but I'm going to tell you, they, they, uh, they're going, amen, there's going to be a separation there, amen, eventually, amen, but, I'm going to, but we must not try to mix with this false worship. We need, though we need truth in our worship. He said worship uh, worship in spirit and in truth. Amen. If we're going to worship, it's going to take truth. Amen. Truly to worship. Amen. And I will get to more of that later. But we, we need true biblical worship. Amen. I do believe somebody worship out of a pure heart. Giving everything over to God. There's nothing more, there's nothing greater than this. Worship must be from the heart. Amen. If we're truly to worship, it's going to only come from the heart. Amen. Truly, because we have a heart for worship, we're going to worship God in purity, holiness. Amen. We're going to worship God. And our lives are going to be worship unto God. We're going to lift up holy hands and we're going to worship. We're going to put all into our worship. True worship comes out of a love, a heart in love with Jesus. Amen. Them that love Jesus don't have a problem worshiping Him. Amen. Because I love God, I want Him to receive worship. Amen. I want Him to see or receive worship in the way I dress. I want Him to see where I worship in the way I talk, in the way I walk, the way I present myself, the way I preach, the way I sing, the way I, t I testify, the way I give, amen, the way that I raise my children, the way that I leave my home, and everything, I want God to receive worship. And because I love Him, I'm going to worship. Rightly. Amen. And I, when I'm in this assembly, I'm going to worship. Amen. Why? Because I love God. Amen. We must beware. Someone with a heart of oh, Amen. For worship. Amen. Their life worships God as we said. And someone with a heart. Amen. For worship. They worship in good times and bad times. We must worship. Amen. In good times and bad times. As we said this morning about Paul and Silas. As they was in the prison cell. They, amen. Did their flesh feel like worshiping God? Probably not. Amen. But they they pressed through and worshiped God. Amen. I believe. Amen. They had been beat. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, open sores in them places. Amen. There's no telling what was in them jail cells at that time. It wasn't a pretty sight. Amen. But they worshiped God whether it was good or bad for them. Beware of not worshiping God. If you're not worshiping from the heart, you're going to worship only when things are going your way. Amen. Amen. And we must give our all in worship. Amen. God deserves 
our everything. We must give all in worshiping. We must never have heartily entered the worship. And if you have a heart for worship, you you amen amen. You you, don't, you never have to, and you must never get half heartedly enter into this. If we're in assemblies, we'll talk more about later. But if we're in this church service, if we're if we're in a service, what do we should amen give our all? To worshiping God. Amen. To my shame, I could say I've let things come in and then let things distract me from worshiping God with everything in me. But we must give our all in our time of prayer. Amen. In our, ser- in our services. In the way we live. Amen. To worshiping God. Our lives should show that we love God and want God to receive glory out of everything we do. When we worship Amen. We must, we must and will give God everything. As we sung that song a little bit ago, to me, He's become everything. If He's truly everything to us, we're going to worship Him with everything in us. Amen. We must give Him, amen, the worship that He is due. Amen. We must worship in spirit and in truth. It brings God worship to live in truth. Amen. To live truth, to live the Word of God, to live in sound doctrine, it brings God worship. Amen. Well, I'm going to tell you this is so, this is vital. It's something that people miss. They amen. They talk about people. Amen. They, they talk about not worshiping God, but amen. Or they worship God, but they don't live in truth. We must know this word of God. Reading, studying, memorizing, knowing, and living this Bible brings worship unto God. Amen. God is glorified. He's lifted up out of such. Amen. And it brings uh, the Lord worship to preach truth. Amen. I'm going to tell you this is well, this is worship unto God that we preach. Amen. And if you hear, when you hear the preaching of truth, when you take that, you apply that, I do believe God receives worship out of such. Amen. We must worship in the beauty of holiness. As as the Bible says, a holy life brings worship and glory unto God. We talk about it a whole lot, but I do believe there's nothing more beautiful and nothing that shows someone loves God than a life that's consecrated unto Him. Amen. I'm going to tell you, I, amen. I have very little confidence that somebody, amen, that can, amen, that appear like they're worshiping in the service, but no, and when they walk out of there, they're, uh, they're living the same lifestyle that everyone else around them is living. There's nothing different than them in this world, and uh, than, uh, than them in the world. We must beware. Amen. True worship comes out. Of holiness. Amen. 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 We must worship in our prayer lives. Our whole prayer lives should not be consumed with Amen. What can I Amen? God, give me this, give me that. But it must be consumed, Amen, as well, with lift, with lifting God up. The Bible does tell us, the knock and it shall be opened, seek and ye shall find, Amen, ask and ye shall receive. I do believe it's biblical to boldly approach the throne of grace and find help in your time of need. I do believe we must ask of God for our need. Amen. I want to tell you, if I, amen, it wouldn't be God's will for me not to ask God to heal me if I had an ailment in my body. Amen. It wouldn't be God's will if I didn't ask God to help me or lead me in every financial thing in my life. Amen. But I must, amen, not only call upon Him for what I need, but I must call upon Him, amen, and worship Him, amen, out of a pure Holy heart, give, amen, as I pray, tell God how much I love Him. Amen. We must give ourselves in prayer to worshiping God. In an assembly, we must worship God. It tells us in Colossians 3.16, Let the Word of Christ dwell richly in all wisdom, teaching, admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing grace in your hearts, 
to the Lord. Amen. This is I am. Amen. Tells us to, amen, admonish one another. Amen. I do believe that could be applied to the assembly. It tells in Psalms 151 where we read earlier, but it says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise in the sanctuary. Praise Him in the firmament of His power. Amen. We must praise in the assembly. We must give our all in the assembly. We must all, we must push for every service. And how are we going to push for every service? That we worship God in every service. We, man, as I said, it's not limited this morning. It's not limited to one place. Worshiping God should not be limited to this, uh, this assembly together. I do believe every day in everything you do, amen, in your prayer time, amen, you must worship God. Amen. Throughout the day, just tell the Lord you love Him. Amen. Tell the Lord how thankful you are for Him. Amen. Worship in your everyday lives. Amen. As I mentioned, Brother Persinger earlier, amen. As I, he worked for us for a little while throughout the day, he would just say, Oh, how I love you, Jesus. Amen. He worshiped God outside of that. But I do believe when we're in this assembly, we must worship. How it encourages others to worship. Amen. If you want, amen, a church, amen, full of worship, you worship with your whole heart. We need worship. Amen. We must worship God with our everything. Amen. To my shame as I said, I've let things come in and distract me. We must beware of distractions. Things are going to come. Things are going to come into your mind. Things are going to come up you need to do. Amen. And God forbid. Amen. Things come up on that cell phone. You get on that cell phone. Amen. Or, or something else like that distracts you. Beware of something distracting you from worshiping God in that service. Amen. Everything else can wait. Amen. Yes, you have responsibilities them responsibility should wait until, amen, that service is done. Because God is worthy of our worship. We must give our all in worshiping in every service. Just as well as on our jobs, we give our all on our jobs, and we should give our all on our jobs. We must give our all, amen, in, our, in the assembly this time, that, amen, that God has led for us. To come together. Amen. Worship God. Amen. And you know, we must have unity in worship. I do believe, amen, we must unify in this. Amen. What a, what a wonderful thing when you see everybody putting in their all into worship. Amen. What could God do through that? And truly, amen, really it's not just what God can do for us through that. That God is worthy. He's worthy of nothing less than us giving every one of us giving her all to Him in worship. Amen. What, amen. How it should be. A hundred percent of every Christian in this assembly to give God their all in worship. We must. Amen. And lastly is, when the, when the water, amen, we must come while the water's stirring. Amen. Now, this is something I thought about some time back. And amen, maybe in January when we was having prayer meetings. Amen. As you look at the pool of Bethesda, Bethesda, amen, the, the GA, amen, all the, amen, impotent folks, it says the sick, amen, stood there and an angel would come in. Amen. And when the water was stirred, who got in? Amen. God healed. Amen. While the water was stirred. But I do believe this water can be stirred at all times. Jesus came to this man that's been sitting there for eight years and told him, hey man, would you be healed? Well, I have no one to help me. But Jesus, hey amen, stepped in and said, well, take up your bed and walk. I do believe, hey amen, now we have that same Christ. Hey amen, we can, hey amen, that water can be stirred at any time. When we're in prayer meetings, we must push for that service just as well as we push for this service. Amen. Amen. We must push to see the Spirit of God move. Amen. Let's let God have His way in us. And if we give our all to worship what God can truly do in this assembly together. Amen. Let us worship 
Amen. Give our all to worship. Amen. Of course, as we said, amen, it's not limited to the assembly. And it's not limited to raising your hands, weeping in tears, to believe that's all a part of worship. Running around the church, leaping, amen, all of these things. But it is also in a life given and consecrated to the Lord Jesus Christ. We, we must worship Him for He is worthy of our worship. Let's stand to our feet. Amen.